Welcome to a beginner's guide for Excel in 2023. This is going to be the first part of a series where I go over beginner, intermediate, and advanced techniques over a series of videos. This video is for people who have never used Excel before, have only used it a few times, haven't used it in a long time, and for those who just need to refresh some basic skills. Now to start all the way from the beginning, what is Excel and why do you need to know it? Well, Excel I would say is the most popular spreadsheet application used by more, most organizations to organize data. And you can use this application to analyze and create visualizations of all kinds of data using different functions, formulas, features, and more. It can really boost your productivity in the workplace and when used correctly, help you present clear and concise data. Now, the first time you go onto Excel, you're going to be met with this screen showing you a bunch of templates and offering you a blank workbook. Now you're going to want to click on this blank workbook and it is going to open you up into your first Excel spreadsheet. Now what you're seeing here is a bunch of columns connecting with a bunch of rows where the columns are organized alphabetically and the rows are organized numerically. And where they happen to intersect, let's say right here, is referred to as a cell. And since this is in column D with the third row, it would be denoted as D3. You can also see that up here in the left corner, it is D3. If I wanna to go to a cell really quickly, for example, I type in M10, it will bring me to that cell right away. Now, in order to activate a cell, there's two ways you can go about it. You can either just click on the cell you want, or you could double click on it to type something in. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you can't type something in when clicking on it once. However, when double clicking and then right clicking for more options, you'll mainly get formatting options and that's it. However, if you just click on a cell once and then right click, you will be shown plenty more options along with your formatting options. And then you can filter, sort, and do so much more that we will get into in the next video. Now, to go over the columns and rows a little more, and you want to have more options for them, you can also right click on the letter, or you could also do it for the number. This, you get the same options for rows as you get for columns. So I'm gonna right click on the C here, and then you'll see that you're granted with a bunch of formatting options that will affect the entire column. But we, what we were mainly looking at right now are these lower ones. So the, there's the insert option where this adds another column. So do, to show you better, I'll type in something here like hello. And then if I wanted another cell here, I would insert that. And then that would transfer the hello to the new column D, the C became a D and then it added the new one. If I wanted it to go back to C, I could right click on this again and delete this current column. And then the hello will go back to the C column, just like that. And then if I didn't want hello here at all, I could just clear the contents of the entire column. Once again, it is the exact same for rows as far as the options goes. And say I need information that I'm referring back to in a cell one time. You'll learn about this later. But I don't want to see it on my sheet necessarily. You can also do the option of hiding the rows and unhiding the rows. Where, oh sorry, I clicked unhide there, but if you click hide, it still exists in the sheet. It just makes it really small so you can't see it. But as you can see, it skips from one to three right here. In order to unhide it, I'll just highlight over it, go back to my options and click unhide. Now I have taken the liberty of typing in welcome to Excel in cell B2 right here. However, you can see that it is slightly protruding into cell C2 and we don't want that. And in order to fix this, we can extend the length of our B column by clicking on the edge of it here and dragging it over. And there's multiple ways we can go about this. We can either drag it over or we can double click on it for it to automatically fit our contents of the column B. And then we can also right click on it and then go to column width right here and then specify how long we want it to be. So I'll just put in 15 right now and it will go to 15. And it all works the exact same 
for rows. You, we got to remember this. I'm going to put it back, however, so that it's still protruding cell C, because what if you do want it in cell C2 as well as cell B2? Well, there's a function for this. And up here in your home ribbon, you will see the wrap text and merge and center functions that we are going to go over now. And what the merge and center function basically does is when you highlight a range of cells, it merges all of them into one large one. So right now I could highlight B2 to C2, press merge and center. It centers the text and then it just makes it one big cell. If I took the wording out of this, you can see that there's no longer the border lines there. It's just one large cell. I'm going to undo that action using the control Z keyboard function. And my welcome to Excel is back. And then say I wanted to wrap the text. First, I'm going to unmerge it so it's still in B2. And when I press wrap text, it basically combines all that text into that one column and one row in that cell. So it's no longer protruding and it goes downwards. And then I could just move the width of the column B and it will look like that. Or if I make it a bit shorter, you'll see how it just wraps around and it continually goes down. And even if I shorten up the row two here, it'll still stay in the column. You just won't be able to see it all. And that is how the wrap text and merge center functions work. And now the last thing I would like to show you in this beginner's video is some formatting and introduce you to functions. So for example, I'm going to type in a bunch of numbers in this in the column B. So I'll put in 20, 47, 89, 21. Now I want all of these numbers to be highlighted in their own border. And what I can do is highlight the range of cells from B2 to B5 and use this icon up here, which specifies bordering. So top border, left border, right border. If I click on left border right here, you can see that it slightly shades in the left border of the cell range that I highlighted, indicating that it's here. Or I could highlight it like so, and then click the thick outside border. So all of my values will now be bordered off and very visible to the eye. Now, functions, I'm gonna go through one right now. However, there are so, so many of these and it's good to have knowledge of all of them. I have another playlist that goes over probably 20 functions that you can check out later. But right now, just to introduce you to them, they are basically built-in formulas that Excel is already providing for you. So for example, you will start off every function with either the equal symbol or the plus sign, but it's usually easier just to use the equal symbol. And then you can type in your function. In this case, the function that I want to use is called sum. And as you can see, there's plenty of functions that start off with SUM. However, I want the very first one. And then you can go through this and explore on your own. As you click on them, it will also show you what it does. So right now I want sum that adds all the numbers in a range of cells. I'll double click on that and then I will see my options of number one, number two. And then there's two ways you could go about this basically. You can either click on your first cell, put in a comma, second cell, comma, third cell, and so on. This is probably better for when you don't have a range. Let's say I just wanted B2 and B5, then I would do this. However, I want to add up all of them. So instead, I could just highlight the range that I want summed up, like so. And it'll all just count as number one, and then it will recognize it as B2 to B5. I will close off that bracket, and it will sum it up for me, giving me 177. If you've made it this far, congratulations. You are on the path to becoming a pro. For the remainder of the video, however, I'm going to be going over formatting and font techniques. Now, I know a lot of you already know that. So if you do already know that, and the rest of the video is not for you, Make sure to check out the intermediate tutorial where I'll be going over more advanced techniques such as conditional formatting and sort and filter functions. But for now, I'm just going to be going over the font group in the home tab, just for those who have never been familiar with it before. To show you how the font group in the home ribbon works, I'll just type in a word such as important. Then let's just assume that I have an important value here in the cell I6. 
And I want to emphasize that. Well, I can use the font tab to do exactly this. First, I'd want to make important look bigger. So I'd pick a different font size. Let's say I'd go up to 36. I'd expand this H column by double clicking on it. And then I'd really want to make it pop. I would go to this icon here to pick the font color. Do I want it blue, orange? In this case, I want it red. And then this will fill in the color of the cell. I would want that black. And now it's really starting to pop at us. We can do a little bit more. We can change the style of the font if we want to something bigger, such as this. Extend my column again. And then we can bold it, italicize it, underline it, really make it stick out. And this is everything that the font group is really, really good for. And these two buttons, these two icons right here, just make the text smaller or larger at your discretion. Now, this is the end of the first video of my series. Make sure to tune into the next video that covers more intermediate skills. If you found this video helpful at all, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out the rest of my channel where I cover all things Excel.